At Classic Cover Insurance, agreed value means agreed value. No fish hooks. There's a lot of reasons why your hot rod or classic should be insured with Classic Cover. To find out more, jump onto our website and see for yourself. Casting. I was born into it. Um, parents and family all had cars, so I had no real choice really. Flying around in the back seat of a Mark 1 Zephyr with my dad, and, and we grew up. Family events were all based around going out in the cars and go to the beach and fish and chips. And I was the first one to sort of really do the hot rod thing. When I was about 11, the movie Hot Rod was on TV late at night and I stayed up, waited till my parents were asleep and it was late on, snuck up and watched it and saw my first Willie's coat. And um, yeah, there it is, sort of stuck with me. I was talking about Willie's coops and nobody knew what they were really. That's sort of an ugly little car and I liked it. We're wearing behind Nick Bobbley is Pro Tune Automotive and the back shed here was always rented out. There was every weekend I used to come down as a kid on a push bike and the doors would be open and there'd be three or four projects on the go at a time. Burnouts outside and guys spannering and putting V8s and Holdens and Chevs and there was roadsters and tea buckets and everything happened out here. It was good. It was, um, Quite neat to get permission to actually move in and have my junk in here, really. I was saving up for a trip overseas to go to Pleasanton to the Willys Roundup to go and see them in real life. And I decided at the time I wonder what's available in New Zealand. Um, I knew the fiberglass bodies were available down in Fairview Fiberglass, and that was quite exciting. So I got the brochures and stuff and had the price and I thought, well, I wonder if there's any real ones around. So back to the old magazines and flicked through and found a couple of pictures and got on the phone and because the internet wasn't around then and got one number and then somebody knew someone and somebody else knew someone else and next thing in the roof of Steely Gears at Tony Rattrys was this old Willie's coupe body and six months later it was in my garage, yeah. Still haven't been to America. So, um, but back then it was a big deal. Like, you know, like the first Willys I ever saw in real life was the one that arrived in my driveway. Yeah, parts are hard to find. The back, the back of the coupe. When I first got the car, it was a real mess. It was a throwaway item, really. And the whole back behind the boot was missing. And. I was talking to some guy and he was telling me when I was living down in Wellington that up this creek at the back of Wellington there was this Willie's Coop and oh, Willie's sedan in the creek. So I got out the car and drove up the road and found this creek and wandered up the creek and sure enough the back end of this Willie's sedan's hanging out and I grabbed it with my hand and it pulled off and that's welded to the back of the car now. It was better to have a rusty one than none at all. All steel body. Um, the bootlet I've made because we were taking it up to Auckland one day for the hot rod blowout, towing it up there, and we got to Taupo and the bootlet was gone, and all our luggage was nearly gone because we had that in the back of the car and we never found it again. So somewhere in the in a paddock or a drain, there's a genuine 40 Willys Coupe bootlet, but it was rough and rusty, so it, it was probably better off. Had a Volkswagen Beetle at the time that I was driving every day and I looked at it and it looked the same shape so I cut the roof off it. And that's the bootlet of the car now. The chassis is made up out of the back end of it is a uh, Mitsubishi ute frame which has been used because when you put the body straight on it lines up just about bolt body wise and everything. The front we've cut off and reshaped and it's got a, a guy turned up one day with an old berry tube axle with elliptic springs and so that went in underneath it. The engine we borrowed to do a show in Pori Rua, we thought we'd be cool and put this, this rusty old car to the National Hot Rod Show, pulled up and they weren't gonna let us take it in the show at all because it was all rough and so on. And we'd borrowed a Hemi and a supercharger off 
off of a friend's race car and they let us put it in there and we actually won the overall prize. So it was pretty cool to, to walk away with that. I never gave it back. Had to strike a, strike a deal with cash and a Nash Metropolitan to own it. Restoring a Willys Coupe, isn't it? Putting a Hemi in a four speed and an old 57 Ford nine inch in one, you know. One day it might be painted and it'll be all on the horrible 70s flakes and stripes and who knows. I'll just keep plugging away at time. The bucket's a project that I owned 12 years ago and got rid of and it got pulled apart and donated for another car. And then a friend of mine got it and his garage got torched by some nice guy and it burnt to the ground. And fortunately a whole lot of the stuff was split off and I still had it in my garage so I've got it back and had it used to have a roadster and got rid of that and can't afford another roadster. so. Um, had a look around the shed and I've got enough stuff to put a bucket together. So generally the builders, I like buckets that sit right. Um, the concept is to get it nice and low. I want to sit right in it, which I've accomplished. Um, it's an early Chevy, it's a front mount 55 Chevy engine with a power glide. And as much New Zealand speed gear on it as I can get, it's got Barry and Chung bits and pieces everywhere and an old guy up in Napier cast me some aluminium bits and pieces and Mills are up together, it owes me a very small amount of money um, and I'll get it going on the road and enjoy the summertime again in it, simply. The more I think about it, the least I know about what horroring is anymore. You can go to a show and there's all of these cars that have been put together and they're all really cool cars. I was away on the weekend and we went away and I looked at a car twice and it was two cars. And you look across and you see somebody with a Mark 1 Zephyr with wheel spats on it and all the little pom-poms hanging down and stuff and you think there's something that used to cruise around town in the 50s or 70s or whatever, what I remember on the street. The old speed shop stuff and the BC catalogues and things, you know, you've got Hillman manifolds and helm and rocker covers and, and they're there because that's what people were doing up. You don't have to fit in, the sport was never about that.